there are lots of reasons why you'd want to use the Rackspace API. Uh, Rackspace is a great cloud service that allows you to spin up servers, shut down servers. Um, with the API, you'd be able to do those functions, be able to change IP addresses, get information about the servers, you'd be able to create databases and backups and all these great things and load balancers that you can do all through the API. Rackspace is a full-fledged API, and it's all documented on docs.rackspace.com. This is not the most beautiful API that I've seen uh, in terms of the way they've documented it, but it works really well. They've got a really great setup. Basically, you make one call to the, auth to the authentication using your API key to get an auth token. That token is good for X amount of time, and you can use that token in the header of subsequent requests. It's really simple. Make one call to auth, use that for the rest of your calls. Today we're going to do a Node.js script that makes a call to get a list of our servers in a certain server area. Right? We're not going to do any functions, we're just going to get that data. So let's figure out how we're going to do that. So to start off, you need your API key, uh, which you can get if you go to your um, you go to your control panel, you go to account, and then account settings, and then just copy your API key from there. A um, couple steps here we're going to take. The first thing is uh, we're going to have our Node.js packages that we're going to need. We're going to use the request API. Um, I'm going to pull that in a second. Second thing we're going to do is uh, establish variables for our credentials. Then we're going to, um, you know, uh, we're going to say what the token auth URL is, right? And then we're going to uh, go ahead and get the token, right? Get the token. And actually, I'm going to get rid of this step because that's not really a step. We're going to get the token. That's the next step. After we've got the token, we're going to uh, we're going to list all the servers in a certain endpoint in DFW. DFW is the Dallas Fort Worth location. So that if you can see right here that mine is in the Dallas area here, you have a different area for each of your server blocks. Uh, I'll show you all that in a second. And then after that, we're just going to get info about a server, right? So we're just going to do that. So the first thing is node packages we need. So we need the request package so we can make requests. It's a nice wrapper. So var request equals require request. And then we actually have to go to the command line here and say npm. And I'm just, I have a folder. I should show you this. I've got a folder called Rackspace. And it's just got index.js in it. Uh, so we're just going to do npm install request. That's going to install that for us. Great. Clear. And now that we have it, we're going to say what our creds are. So I've got two creds for me. I've got my API key, which I will paste over here which is this guy, and then I've got my account name, which is optical effects, so user equals optical effects, right? And you can see that, uh, you can see that right here, account optical effects, and the API key again is from the user page. So now we're gonna get the token. So the way we get the token is we make a request to the token URL, and to do that, um, you can go to the auth section here, and it just, it just details out with curl how you would do this. Basically, you make a request to this, um, to this URL and you pass it your credentials. Now they have a couple options here for doing this actually. You can pass password credentials which is username and password uh, which I prefer not doing that. I like to use the API key if I can which is the second method right here which is using this this little JSON object so username and an API key. I prefer to use the API key than the password because you can continue to reset your API key if it gets stolen or whatever reason. So we're going to go that route. So the way you use request is you say request and you pass it an object, right? And then after the object, you have a function that has an error, error, and then response, and then you have the actual body of the thing. So that's the thing. We're going to do a get, uh, sorry, we're going to do a, a post request, so method post. We're going to say the URL is, and I'm going to give you the URL here. Actually, let's go ahead and copy it right straight from the docs right there. That's the URL. Uh, we're going to say the body is going to be this, what they have written here. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just, now here's a, here's a, uh, yeah, so it's an auth object right here, auth, and then a bunch of stuff. So I could paste that, but I have it formatted nicely already, so I'm just going to put that in here. Boom, look at that. So again, it's Rex. K S K E API credentials object username API key right and these just these objects just reference what's up here again this is exactly what is written right here so that's the body of the request because this is JSON and not a string we have to tell that this is JSON it'll also set the headers 
Very important, if you do this in PHP and you do not set JSON to true or you do not send a JSON content type, then you will have problems. You need to set a JSON content type. Luckily for me, using Node, when I set JSON to true, it will set the content type for me. Very important, it will fail if you don't have JSON content type. Anyway. That is the last piece we need for that, so we can just log this out now to make sure we're on the right page. So we'll console.log the body, and if all goes well, I should be responded with a token. So let's save that. We'll bring our, that's the, that's the sample code I'm using, so I did a second ago, not terminal. Okay, so we're going to run this, so just node index to just run it. And there we go, we've got a object, so access token ID and that's the token ID I need and you can see when it expires when I need a new one um, just call this every you can be more efficient about it but what I do is I call this every time it gives you the same token every time until it expires so if you want to be super safe just call this each time and use the token it gives you or you could add a timer into your script make it a little more complicated but you wouldn't have to make a second request so if you want efficiency in a production application use it till it expires get a new one if you're just doing this for one off or one time thing, just call it each time. Now that we've got our token, let's actually extract it out. So var token equals body dot access dot token dot ID. Okay, that's our token. And now we also need to extract our account ID, which is down here, this ID right here. We're actually going to need that for some of the requests we're going to be doing. You'll see that in a second. So var account equals body dot access dot token actually user is that what it is so it's here it's also in you know let's actually just let's check something out real quick um, let's see if let's see it let's look at what body.access.token is because I think we might be able to get this 64193 number there too it does not appreciate that I spelled access wrong, which is why it doesn't appreciate it. Okay, let's run that again. Okay, tenant, okay, so no, user ID is not the right number. We actually need uh, tenant.id, okay? So just a little intricacy, var account equals body.access.token.tenant.id, okay? You just, just need to know that these are here. It's just how it works. Now that we've got those two, we now need to actually figure out what kind of API call we want to make. So we're going to make a call to list server. So again, uh, I've gone to the, if you go to API documentation, cloud servers is what we're, you can, you can do stuff to all these, but I'm using cloud servers right now, uh, API developer guide, and then we're down here at servers list server. So here's the API call. It's a little complicated to read, but basically you need to call slash servers after you have your endpoint. Okay, now the endpoints are listed out kind of like these. These are the endpoints right here. But just for our demonstration and our purposes, I'm going to show you what the endpoint is. So our endpoint is here. So our, we have a DFW server. Again, we saw that from the Rackspace admin panel. And it's .com slash v2. And, and if you really wanted to, you could see all of these API endpoints from inside of this body inside of here these objects here the ones that are not showing these are where you get these from okay but I just I'm gonna tell you what it is so it's dot com slash v2 slash your account number which is why we need that account number so that's the endpoint to start all of the server commands that's where you need to start so for list servers we need to call the endpoint slash servers okay now you're gonna ask yourself what all this crap is well this is querying to get specifics we don't need specifics we want everything that's how that's going to work. So we're going to make another request now, now that we have that. Actually, before we do that, our server endpoint. And then here, we'll say our auth token, which needs to be our header. So remember I said in the beginning, we make a call to our authentication to get our token. And now we're going to use the token. So var auth equals, and which is just going to be a, a simple token which I like to write on one line if it's only one thing. And it's going to be x dash auth dash token. And then that's going to be our token. 
Okay, so this is how this is the header now that we need to pass with every subsequent call. So now we're going to say list all servers. So let's make that call. So request, same thing as before, and then again function error response body again, just the same thing as before. This is going to be a get call now because we're just going to get the list. So get, and then same situation. We're going to have the URL which we know as the endpoint, and this time again. A According to the API, it's slash servers. Okay, so slash servers. That's where we want to call. And then we're going to say the same thing, JSON true, like before, because we want to tell Rackspace we want JSON. It will fail if you don't do this. And in PHP, you need to send the right content type headers. And lastly, we need to set the headers to our auth token. Okay, again, this is what we have to send for every call. Every call we make from here on out needs to have that header. We don't need to do anything else because that's where we stop. Console.log body. And we can open up terminal now. Let's clear that out. And go ahead and run our file. And there you go. We have our servers. There's only one server because this is a test. And there's its ID. Perfect. So now that we have its ID, let's go ahead and save that and make one more call. So I'm going to list all servers in DFW. So that's the comment here. Last step is going to be get info about the server right there. So we're just going to say var id equals body dot servers, and it's an array. It's only one dot id. You can do whatever you want with this. I'm just making this as a test. And we're just going to do the last thing, which is, and if you look at the API, it says get server details. It is slash servers slash id. Okay, so it's almost the same as this. Let's just copy and paste this down here. Fix our spacing close off this function. It's a get endpoint, again, slash ID. So there's our ID. We called it up here. JSON true, header off, perfect. And console.log body to show all the details. So save, and let's run it. Boom. And there you have it, all of our details about our server. So you can see here using the Rackspace API how we've made an authentication call. So we have a token, and you can see how we've used that token to get a list of servers, and we've used that token to get information about a server. You can do a number of things with this, but this is just a start. Rackspace, good job on the API. Thanks, guys.